Hey everyone, this is Dr. Calkins. Today we're going to do experiment 11. This is bigger molecules are better. And specifically that means polymers. Polymers are everywhere. Could be the rubber on your tire or your shoe sole. Could be uh, plastic bags, Ziploc bags, um, plastic mechanical pencils. They're everywhere. So to make a polymer, you need monomers that can stick together over and over and over and over again until they make an extended chain called a polymer. In most addition polymers, you need an alkene. It's a major portion of the homework to know that you're looking for that E-N-E -E ending for a lot of our addition polymers. To notice lots of these names coming down here, that's what they have in common. All of these, as we see in our recycling code polymers, nearly all of them, and then E and E, E and E, E and E, E and E, and so forth. And that's because even this one here, polyvinyl chloride, comes from chloroethene. It's just not listed here. So knowing that that double bond is so important is useful because those double bonds turn into single bonds, and those single bonds are what we call polymers. So anytime you have a plastic item, there's usually a recycle code that either has a triangle with a number, which could be one through seven, or with a specific code. Those specific codes are the ones that tell recyclers which ones to put together so that they can be reused. And that's what we're gonna do first in lab, is go back in the back, sort out some garbage, and recognize the recycling codes. The recycling codes are important because it can help us figure out who their original mol uh, monomer is. And in order to get a monomer, just remember to remove poly from their name. So just by looking up briefly, polyethylene terephthalate, we're gonna take away poly. Ethylene terephthalate remains. High density polyethylene, take away the high density and the poly, you get ethylene. Vinyl, polyvinyl chloride, you can take away poly and get vinyl chloride, which is also chloroethene. Here we have low density polyethylene, so take away low density, take away poly, you get ethylene once again. These are two very similar polymers, just different in their branch chains. Polypropylene, an extra carbon there because of the prop versus the eth, but take away poly nevertheless. And take away poly here for polystyrene. Um, so let's take a moment, go back and check out some garbage. All right, so let's look at our garbage sorting for recycling code section. Again, we're gonna either write the number or the letters or both, depending on what we see. And then on your own time, come back and take away poly. So here's our first one. Cute little Angry Birds milk jug. So we look around on the codes and here we see our recycling code and if you can see it close enough it looks like the number two let's record that we move over to our wash bottle very similar location we see there that it's a number four pvc pipe and it's got its own little sticker. Three. Soda bottles, usually on the bottom, sometimes in the corner, there it is. So it looks like number one. And over here with our yogurt, a little bit bigger. Let's see, get the glare on it. Looks like the number five. There you go. And lastly, our styrofoam cup. Nice and stamped on it, number six. So look at these codes when you want to recycle because they need to be sorted by their monomer. All right, so this is one of my more favorite labs of the semester. Get to make our own polymers. Uh, plenty of YouTube videos on this. So we're gonna use glue and polyvinyl alcohol based polymers. And then we're going to use borate and starch as our cross-linking agents. So we're going to get six cups, uh, going to label those. And then based on the summary down here, this is basically the ingredients we're going to be adding as we go across in order to make six different batches that we can use on those tests on the next page. So we're going to take a minute to get our glue ready, and then we're going to come back with our food coloring. All right, so we have things ready to go. We have our glue. Uh, we have our polyvinyl alcohol, which is only used in number six. We have our cross-linking agents for a little bit later. And over here we have our labeled cups 
one all the way across to six. We're going to use colors on those first four. And then this one is going to be with starch. So we're going to leave it white. And then over here, it's going to be PVA, so it'll be more of a clear. So we're going to come back with those ready to go. All right, so if we look at number one, we have glue, food coloring, 20 mils of water, 10 mils of borate. So if you look over, we have that set up. If you go over to two, we have our glue, food coloring, we have our 40 mils of water, 10 mils of borate. You go over to three, we have our glue, our food coloring, no water, and 10 mils of borate. Four, we have our glue, food coloring, now 20 mils of water, and 20 mils of borate. Go over to five, we have glue, food coloring, 20 mils of water, 20 mils of starch. We have number six, our PVA, notice it's clear compared to the rest, food coloring, no water, and five mils of borate. We'll come back when we're ready to mix. All right, so here's our number one. We're gonna add some food coloring to it. Two drops is more than enough. Notice it doesn't really mix yet, so we're gonna have to mix it. And then here's our water. Add that to it. And the reason we add color now is because then it can stick to the glue and not our fingers. So as we stir it, it's going to slowly go homogeneous and become very thin paint. So we're going to do this as we go across to all of these, and then we'll be back when that is finished. All right, so here's our blue. Notice it's a pastel color. Here's our yellow. Here's our green. Now red turned into pink. We still have our white, and we still have our clear. For extra credit, can you tell me which reagent I was missing earlier? And we'll come back as we add our bore. All right, so now we're gonna add the cross-linking agent, which in this case is uh, sodium borate, which is basically just detergent you can get from the store. Ours is a little fancier, but basically the same thing. So as soon as we add it, we're gonna get that polymerizing reaction that you've probably seen on hundreds of YouTube videos. The only major difference for us is we're going to test how these ingredients change its ability to do things like stretch and bounce and so forth. So as we stir this up, we're going to spend some time stirring these as we go down through there. And then we'll touch on these different ones at the end here in a moment. All right, so here we have our first one stirred up. A little bit of juice left over, that's okay. Each one's different for a reason. Here we have our chunk, quite a bit of juice left over there, and that's okay. That's part of it. Here, hardly none left. Here, pretty much just one solid portion as well. And this one was different, so we saved it. Uh, this one's using starch as a cross-linking agent, so let's add that one to it. And then stir it up to give you how slightly different it is. Notice it has that same kind of texture as we stir it up. Again, nothing too fancy, but it is different than the others in its texture. And then lastly, we'll come back to finish during that one. We're going to add our PVA, which is this clear liquid. It's got a few little bubbles in it. This one's very unique compared to many. And as we stir it, nice, clear, and lumpy. So we're going to give these a little more time to stir, and then we'll be right back. All right, now that they've had a, uh, some stirring and a few minutes to set up, we're going to transfer them to these pre-labeled Ziploc bags, leaving behind any leftover juice only taking the chunk that we made, leaving the juice behind, that'll be disposed of in the trash can, and then use the bag itself to pull it off the stick. And we're gonna do this to all the rest and be back. All right, now they're transferred to bags. Notice we have quite a bit of juice left that'll be disposed of, quite a bit of juice left disposed of, but notice all of these use almost other ingredients, starch a little bit left, PVA completely done. So we're going to work these around in the bag, try to get them to absorb their juices a little bit more before we take them out, turn the page, and start testing them. So we'll be back then. All right, so we're ready to perform our tests. We're going to do a um, stretch test. We're going to do a bounce test, a bubble test, and then a puddle test. Since it took us a while to get everything ready, we went ahead and waited our 15 minutes. So we're going to move over to number one 
and start giving our measurements after 15 minutes. We made them into a ball and let them sit. So this one here, we're looking at about eight and a half centimeters. This one I think is gonna be our winner at about 11 and a half. Here we have one maybe five centimeters. Here maybe 10. Starch is gonna be a close one. There's actually a, probably a 12. And then our last one looks like maybe at about an eight. So record those and this little row and we'll come back. All right, so the best way to do this test is kind of to get them kind of rolled up, get them in that cylinder kind of shape. That'll give them the best chance at uh, stretching. So we're gonna go up here and then see how long it takes to break under its own weight. So as we see it stretch, wait for it to snap under its own weight. Getting closer to 30. Getting thin at the top. It's in the I think I can mode. And we'll only do these for the ones that actually stretch. Some of those are more bouncy ball like. So we'll just give you our estimates. This one's definitely hanging in there. Getting closer. Reminds me of the older brother spitball test. Now we're getting closer to 50. This one might go all the way. Although it's starting to tear at the top, so be ready. 60. Almost 70. Keeps going and going. Starting to tear, get ready, probably 80. All right, and we'll come back for the next one. So here we have the yellow one. A lot more fluid-like, so this one's gonna be quicker. Notice it's stretching a whole lot faster. So this again is the vertical stretch test. Getting thin at the top already. Looks like a gigantic snot rocket. And we're getting thin, starting to tear, almost, about 51 or so. And we'll come back to the next one. All right, so this one's more bouncy ball-like, so we're going to give it a little motivation, see if we can get it to stretch without breaking. Very rigid like a bouncy ball. feel it, it's little fibers snapping. Might be able to get it to 30. There, it's starting to tear. About 32, about 32. And we'll come back for the next one. All right, here's number four. Definitely uh, a little more flexible. Got a lot of mass, so it's gonna start taking off pretty quick, but then it's gonna weaken at the top. Already starting to get thin under its own weight. Getting ready to thin and break. Wait for it at almost 40, 41. Now it's hanging in there a little better. Thin at the top though, about ready to tear at about 53. All right, here's starch. Definitely a fast one. Gonna go all the way down to 60, 70, almost uh, about 78. All right, here's our last one, number six. Nice and clear, very liquidy, ready to break at about 38. We'll come back for our next step. This should finish our first row. All right, we got our first one, number one in a ball. We're going to drop it from one meter high and see how far it bounces back up. So maybe 10. We'll wait for the next one. All right, here's number two. Wants to be a puddle so quickly. So 
So here we go at one meter height, see how far it bounces, and go. So maybe five. All right, here's number three. One meter height, let's see how far it bounces. Probably 35. All right, here's number four. One meter height, see how far it bounces. So that was about 11. All right, here's our starch number five. One, two, three, drop. And it almost stuck about a two and a half, maybe three. All right, here's our last one with our polyvinyl alcohol. Doesn't like to stay together very well, likes to shatter. Let's see what it does from a one meter height. So it didn't break apart. And it did shatter, going up only about six or seven. All right, so these are a little tricky. Worst thing that can happen is you make some awkward fart noises. But the trick to this is to lay the straw in the middle and then gently fold it over into what looks kind of like a pizza pocket, a little taco. Give it a moment to grow together. That'll prevent some of those weird noises. You're gonna wanna hold right next to the straw so that you don't have a leak. And then you're gonna add a little bit of air and then see how far it goes up. So there we got about five or six. We'll come back for the next one. All right, here we go for number two. So we got a hole at about eight. All right, here's number three. So only about two. All right, here's our number four. So about 17. All right, here's our number five with starch. About uh, 12. And number six with our polyvinyl alcohol. about ten and a half. All right, so you should have our stretch test, should have our bounce test, just did our bubble test, so that one should have been recently finished. We did our sit test and make a puddle at the very beginning, and now we're down here to can it transfer an image with a washable marker. So we're gonna go over here to each one, and see if it does. So here's our first one. Here's our second one. Here's our third one. Here's our fourth one. Fifth. And our last. Can't really see the R, but it says polymer. And we'll come back for our next part. Now that we finished our data, we have one last row to finish. 
this was which was your favorite there's no right or wrong answer here but based on what you saw did you like the ones that were more bouncy more stretchy made better bubbles or transfer and we're gonna take a break and get set up for our next lab so all right the polymers we just did are called addition polymers so they were adding molecules together and then we were cross-linking them with borate and with starch here it's a little bit different this is called a condensation polymer we have two types. We can make a polyamide, kind of like nylon in our case, or a polyester. The reason nylon is a polyamide is because it takes an amine and an acid, forms water, hence condensation, and that will form a amide. Once you form many amides, we would call it a polyamide. To create polyesters like in clothing, you would instead take an alcohol, an acid, and then form an ester. Forming several esters in a row would now be a polyester. So as we look over at our reagents here, you're going to notice that we have this 1,6-hexamethylene uh, uh, diamine. There's our amine. And then on our solution 2, we have this sebacol chloride, which is an acid chloride. Um, instead of making water, we're going to make HCl. So you're going to see some fumes from this. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 20 mils of each, and then we're going to come right back. All right, so here's our amine, and then over there is our carboxylic acid, or in this case, our acid chloride. So we're gonna take this one gently at an angle, and then we're gonna take this other one and pour it slowly down the wall, right over top the other edge. Notice you see some of that smoke. That's our hydrogen chloride gas being formed. And if you look very closely as we tip it back up, you're gonna see in the middle is a, a little ghosty layer. That little ghosty layer is nylon. So right now it's forming a beaker sized layer of nylon. So as we let it sit for a few seconds, right now it's finishing its polymerization process. And what we're gonna do next is take a pair of tweezers, go down and pinch that ghost like layer wrap it on a test tube, and then wind it up much like a uh, fishing string. So we're going to go down, pinch towards the bottom. Notice that film starting to form, dragging it up, laying it over top of our test tube, and then now winding it. And you can keep winding nylon until there's no top layer. So this is making eventually hundreds and hundreds of feet of 100 mil sized pantyhose. So we're going to keep winding this for a while and then we're going to come back here in a few minutes. All right, so I went ahead and broke it just to save a little time. I definitely made several rows over and over and over again. Now what we're going to do is try to unravel it and see if we can get our longest strand to fill in our data book. So we'll see how lucky we are at getting it to unroll without tearing. And then we'll come back to this here in a minute. So we just got it just about unraveled and we're definitely past 200. Gonna go maybe past 300 turn, keep it from breaking. And looks like we're going to run out right about there. So if you measure it, we have 100, back is 200, back is 300, and then add another 55 and a half. Record that in your lab book and we just have a few questions left. All right, uh, last couple questions. As we looked at our first polymers with glue and polyvinyl alcohol, the cross-leaking agents that we used were borate and starch. So review your data. Which one had the most intermolecular forces, in this case hydrogen bonding, that held it together? And oftentimes these are gonna have larger bubbles and resist puddling. So those are gonna be stronger polymers, more likely to bounce. So look at those observations, see which one was a better bouncer. Uh, not always are they good at bubbles, uh, but definitely if they're really strong, they're going to bounce very well. 
and definitely resist puddling. Number two, our little nylon rope that we made that was over 300 centimeters. Shout out to all those students in my previous class that couldn't get over 10 centimeters. We made nylon. And if we make nylon, which kind of condensation polymer was it that we talked about earlier? It has two units. Your choices would be amines and carboxylic acids that make polyamides, or it could be alcohols and acids that make polyesters. And that wraps up this lab.